got to. But yeah, let's get started, man. Welcome to another yeah. Perspectives podcast. You know, this is round two. Uh, we're doing these <laughs> impromptu um, Zoom calls, and they're a little bit exciting. This is Joe Sway. Um, for those of you that are just new to seeing our faces now, um, I'm a Christian uh, speaker uh, from the Democratic Republic of Congo, former Oral Roberts University alumni. Um, mm. And a lot of times people think I'm LeBron James. Why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and we have the man himself, Mr. Chase Brown. How you doing, sir? He's a fellow yeah. Christian, uh, native Texan, University of North Texas alum. Um, yeah. He's an inspiring philanthropic creative. Yeah. Um, man, how you doing, man? Welcome to Dude. quarantine time. How you doing? <laughs> For real, bro. Just chilling, um, chilling, getting through this quarantine, socially distancing, and Absolutely. all that good stuff, bro. <laughs> yeah, we also have the man, the legend, Mr. Young Life himself, uh, Mr. Daniel Torres. How you doing, sir? Good, sir. How are you today? Doing great, man. We're, we're glad mm-hmm. that you're able to get on here with us, man. We appreciate it. Like we mentioned um, on our previous one, we're just, we're wanting to do these as a way to um, kind of get away from our normal, regular podcast where we talk about travel and different things like that. And really mm. kind of integrate, you know, we see a lot, everybody's in quarantine right now. So yeah. why not do creatives and just different people uh, kind of tell them what the Lord is doing this season so that's the purpose for us being here right now I mean Chase you got anything else to add on top of that yeah and I mean really just for these episodes um we we want to bring on people like like frequent travelers um traveling artists traveling creatives um or just like ministry leaders like Daniel um to really just kind of talk about what um what they're going through right now because there's some of them who might be some of the most affected in terms of lifestyle change. And so they're ones who really need to think through this season and need to think about um, kind of how to make this really fruitful and actually like productive season rather than just laying down and watching Netflix for 12 straight hours a day. Um, And Mm. so Daniel, um, I guess, (laughs) man, just to just kind of get into it, you want to give people just a little bit of background about, who you are, um, as Joe Shway says, where your people are from and everything like that. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, hey, uh, thanks for bringing me on. Um, yeah. yeah, so kind of the background there is I grew up in Irving, uh, which is Dallas Metroplex, all that jazz. And uh, I was got picked up um when I was in uh, foster homes by my guardians and they became my parents, uh, lovingly as they walked with my twin and I. Uh, and so growing up, I didn't have, I, I always had a home that loved the Lord. Right. Uh, but it took a long time for me to understand, um, who the Lord was the type of personal relationship. We went to church in one city that was really great. Um, and then came back home. And so I kind of had a split context of what, what it was, uh, to follow the Lord. I wasn't really walking in. I didn't really understand accountability at that point. I didn't really understand, uh, what it was to have a personal relationship. Um, and so senior year, uh, everyone's going off to college and, um, they've got everything lined up and your boy, uh, went to community college because he doesn't do, uh, the SATs or ACTs. <laughs> uh, and so, <laughs> <laughs> And so, uh, in those, in, in that, that beginning time, I really got to understand what it was to actually maybe even stop for the first time and, uh, learn who God was. And so jumping into, um, kind of fast forwarding a little bit, uh, got my associates, went to the university of North Texas, uh, and UNT was an amazing time. Um, and I, the reason I say that was not because of, uh, the like everything that I was involved in that was great uh, but I think it was amazing was because of the re- relationships the Lord allowed me to build um coming in I was still dealing with a lot of stuff that was unresolved from uh going through the foster homes through uh, my biological parents through uh the guardian that whole situation and so the Lord uh really hit me in my face uh with a wall of hey you I'm, I, I want you to grow and in order to do that uh, we're we're going to have to kind of stop and acknowledge these things. And so um, he continued to put different people in my life as that was going on. Uh, and so from the time I jumped into UNT to the time I uh, ended, um, I got involved with Young Life. Uh, 
and the college director there had a wonderful challenge of, um, Hey, uh, I, I, we we're, we're sitting together and this just challenge of, Hey, uh, I don't know if anyone's ever told this uh, brother, there's grace for you. And then a Christian community, that's the first time I think I really heard it and it stuck. Uh, and from there learning what the grace of God was, what, uh, faith was, what walking in a relationship was, what, uh, who the Lord says he is, who the Lord says I am in scripture, not how I feel about it. And then what a day by day, moment by moment relationship looked like. And then what it looked like to have biblical community uh, and all those things. And so graduating, I uh, did part time staff, did full time, and then uh, jumped into uh, or did part time intern. And then uh, they came back and were like, hey, we uh, want, if we, we'd want you to consider a full time position here at UNT. Uh, and I, prayed about it and said, yeah, definitely let's go. And so uh, now I'm on the campus of UNT, uh, spreading the gospel, living relationships uh, with young men and women who are where we were probably uh, our freshman year and um, just kind of um, lovingly walking alongside them. And so it's uh, it's been a journey. It's been a ride, but man, it has been um, a blast. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, just kind of thinking about that being so... Um, you know, involved with college students. Um, first of all, thank you for doing that, for taking that call. You know, I mean, that's so important because, like you say, a lot of us were at that place during our time in college. So then, how, how are you responding in terms of the quarantine? Like, how is all of that and the responsibilities that you have? Like, how are you managing all that? Yeah, especially so I think uh, on? one of the interesting things about the quarantine is despite um, the mandate, like, hey, you can't see people. Uh, we're relational creatures. And so I'm not saying uh, that we're breaking uh, the laws here, but what I am saying is um, relationships don't stop just because we can't see each other uh, right. and we can't go over to someone's house. Um, and so um, one, one of the things we're doing is uh, we're FaceTiming all of our friends. We just got off of our spring break trip with our college students. Um, and for us, that's kind of our big like getaway trip. Um, and this respect for us specifically, it's more of an outreach, uh, and discipleship trip of just, Hey, who is the Lord? What is your identity? Uh, where does your value lie? Uh, where do you see that in scripture? What is God saying about that? And then also just like, uh, kind of scripture talks about, uh, don't forget to remember, um, build an altar, have, have a stone of remembrance of what the Lord uh, has done here. Uh, today. And so as we can, um, relationships, like I said, haven't stopped. And so, um, I'm still doing, uh, Bible studies with my guys. The other leaders are still doing Bible studies with the rules and guys. Uh, and we're still walking with the students, even as they try and figure out a time that, um, they've never touched. They've never been a part of, they've never come into. And to be frankly honest, like none of us have, we've, we've never endured a uh, global pandemic. Um, and so that brings up, um, yeah, I was talking to Chase about this earlier, but this concept of uh, one of our students called this the great pause. Um, this idea of it's causing everyone to stop. Um, and one thing that we've become really good at, and we all do it just in our culture and society, is we run to get away from the things that we don't want to deal with. And so in that, we're having these deeper conversations with a lot of our students because um, they're coming face to face with silence. Uh, and with stillness and um, where a lot of the times they don't give themselves and we don't even give ourselves the ability to do mm. so. Uh, and so uh, as we navigate those conversations, they've been, uh, uh, praise, praise be to God, man, they've been a lot deeper and we've gotten to, we've gotten to just kind of get to the root of a lot of things as this has gone on just, Hey, it doesn't look like the quarantine's going anywhere, but it does. Uh, it does look like, uh, or, but that also means we're not going anywhere either. And so, um, we get to slowly navigate, Hey, w- what are the things we've been running from? Where, why is the silence so terrifying? How does the Lord meet us in those moments to say the silence is something that I've given you so I can talk to you in the wilderness. Um, and as we do that, we, like I said, we, we've seen a lot of growth, uh, and a lot of abrasion from the spirit to their spirit and even our spirit. Hmm. Yeah, dude, that's so good, man. And I, I mean, I'll say as well, like going off of kind of what Joshua pointed out, like I'm super grateful that you're up there at UNT 
um, leading yeah. these kids and everything like that because like that's where you and me met. Um, yeah, you and see alone, everything, everything like that, and so um, you know, young life has had a special place in both of our lives, and being um, courageous and being obedient to answer the call to um, serve mm. that ministry and serve those kids um, is so good, man. And so mm. kind of going into that, cause uh, you were able to go in a little bit into um, kind of your experience on, you know, college campus, college environment, um, everything like that. Mm. And kind of where y'all as a ministry are able to kind of place some focuses on and, and be able to give some hope um, to the, to the students, uh, you personally, how would you say that this quarantine has been affecting you? Um, that maybe not so much in terms of ministry style, if you want to get into that a little bit more, that's great. Um, but maybe just kind of, kind of your routines, um, things that you've been prioritizing, um, you've been focusing on caring about maybe a little bit more, um, like what does this change for you and kind of what does this look like for you? Yeah, definitely. Hey, thanks for that. Um, yeah. Uh, so for myself, uh, I'm not a sit at home, uh, person. I'm a, uh, give me out. We're going to go, we're going to teach some people how to go fish. We're going to go climb. We're going to go have fun. Uh, we're going to enjoy uh, the thing that God's made uh, by his hands and uh, being stuck inside, um, I'm f- being faced with the same questions that my students are. Uh, and I, I think uh, even off of a couple books I've been reading, hey, how how do you sit in the silence? How do you sit in the uh, something that God has given you to be able to listen um, without talking? Um, and I think too often, even myself, I come to the Lord and try and uh, whether it's in prayer or whether it's in frustration or it's it, even in celebration of just talking too much. Um, and I think even in Jesus uh, and Moses examples, you see how they get um, away and they sit in the wilderness and then they wait and listen on the Lord. Um, they very much do the other uh, others uh, just as well. But um, I think that's what the Lord's been saying. It's like, Hey, before you can lead others, I need you to know I want to continue and grow you in our relationship. Uh, but to do so, I need you to listen to me uh, before you go ahead and speak. Um, so there, there's a lot of a scripture scripture that alludes to uh, being quick to listen and slow to speak. Um, and I think too often um, I can reason out. It's like, oh, no, no, no. This is the way we need to go because this, this, and this, and this. And I'm not realizing there's a God of the universe who... Uh, that this this, 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 this doesn't apply to. Um, and so as I've been in quarantine, one of the things I've been trying to do is take uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes a day um, to just sit in the presence of the Lord and, and hear from the Spirit. Um, and I think that takes a posture of coming to the feet of Jesus and realizing, hey, we are one of your beautiful creations, but then also uh, you have made us um, as your sons and as your daughters. And by such, uh, we come to the Father um, as he is our refuge, he's our strength, um, and remembering that posture. And so I, I think that's the hugest thing the Lord has been um, teaching me in this time. Um, outside of that, like daily and they do daily schedule routine, getting up at a certain time. Uh, honestly, man, if left them to myself, uh, I think we were joking about this, but I'd probably be watching Netflix, uh, or something. So, or doing a YouTube or Instagram stream for, you know, three hours. And so, (laughs) so (laughs) say what? No, so I know exactly how that is. <laughs> Bro, you know, get on some Stranger Things or some Office or something. I don't know. I'm telling you, man. But, uh, uh, but yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, that's good, though. Um, I mean, with you just kind of, with you being in, uh, you know, in, the, in that college environment for, for some time now and just kind of dealing with, you know, college students and different things like that, like, uh, to you, what do you think they're really going through right now? You know, because it's a different season completely for them than what it is for maybe all three of us you know we've all graduated and working and doing different things now what do you think um you know the college students maybe just the ones you're involved with or mm-hmm. just your idea you know what do you think they're yeah. going through right now <clears throat> yeah definitely man um 
Yeah, man. I, here's the thing. I, I think you can see this as time structure flows, but um, there's continually been a retreating into your phone. Right. So I, I know this is different in every social context. And so take this with a grain of salt, but uh, very much do I remember the days where uh, you could go outside and hang out with your friends and get lost for however many hours and then come back home. Mm. Right. It was, it's more, it was more, I think widely accepted than it is now. Um, and so uh, the reason I bring that up is because a lot of times when you see college students, uh, they're, the next app, the next, uh, the next, uh, social, um, uh, tech technological, uh, thing that is going to get their attention. Uh, you look at, uh, TikTok, you look at Snapchat, you look at, f uh, Facebook, you look at Instagram, um, and a slew of other ones, all great platforms. I I'm not knocking the platform. So what I'm saying is, uh, is a lot, a lot of the language, uh, even we use is the context of like, you only get to see, 3% of someone's life on these platforms, right? You see the best moments or you see the funniest moments. Um, but rarely do you see the other 97%. Um, but what's happening is, is as that continues is, Hey, who are you compared to the social media that you put up or who am I compared to the social media that I view that's put up? Um, and so with our students, a lot of the time is, um, hey, who am I? Like, they're, like I said, uh, when, when a freshman comes into college, uh, a lot of what they're looking at is uh, where, where does my identity lie? I'm away from home. I'm away from all these things. Where, uh, how am I going to make a name for, for myself or who can I create myself to be? Uh, and then where am I going to be long? Chap Clark talks a lot about that in uh, his book, Her 2.0, but this idea of adolescence looking for um autonomy identity and belonging and so what we find with college students is it's the exact same but they're finally being real enough to be able to ask those questions well now you put yourself in a quarantine where you're away from your friends you've got 75 percent of them 60 percent of them that are with their family and then the other ones who are with their dorm they've never uh, i wouldn't say all of them but i would say a better majority of them are are starting to look at themselves in the idea of like Hey, I don't know what to do and I don't know how to use that time at all. Um, because I'm either having to be real with myself. Um, I don't like to be real with myself. This like being alone causes depression, causes uh, anxiety. Um, or the, the friends that I have aren't, have all faded away. Um, and that's a lot of what they're dealing with. Um, not, not even knowing how to sit in that silence. Uh, and so I'd say where, where, where a lot of the growth or even where a lot of the challenges is coming from is uh, this idea of uh, when we're talking, I think they're finally being met face to face with the idea of, um, hey, who am I, right? And outside of the gospel, I don't think that that question can be answered. I think uh, just like Chase, he's like, Chase is an amazing guy. If you've never met him uh <laughs> he's also single shout out uh but he's an, he's an amazing guy Chill, bro. <laughs> <laughs> sorry I had, to, I had to do it bud uh but he is uh he he loves he's he's a he's a deep talker with people he's a genuine uh he's genuine with them uh and he loves to really understand how someone else operates and thinks uh and can see who god has made them to be but but those are attributes of him though those, those aren't who he uh, specifically who he is and who he was designed to be. Psalms 139 talks about how God uh, knitted them together and knitted us together in our mother's womb, how we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And we, we are done so all uh, before the foundation of the world. Um, and so with college students right now, uh, like if they don't know that, then they're still struggling with everything that they brought from home, everything that they have going on back in their uh, organizations or their groups or lack thereof. And then also uh, now they don't have any outlet. And so where we're kind of like meeting face to face and that is like, Hey, let's continue to hang out just like normal, but also talk about those things. Let's not wait until 42 days from now or however many days um, or 30 days from now when uh, the, the quarantine is lifted. Let's talk about what is going on in your life. And that's what we do on a normal basis. That's what we do when we meet. Um, 
every week uh, when we live really, like I said, relationships aren't stopping. Uh, but I think it's giving him the opportunity to see who um, or what have I been trying to be uh, in lieu or in light of who have I been created to be. Yeah, that's so good. That was, um, <laughs> that was great. Yeah. yeah, and like I know something that kind of like we were talking about beforehand is um, like with this, it, yeah, it, it's removing these just like distractions that they can easily run to that prevents them mm-hmm. from facing these like real life questions um, head on, whether it's questions of identity, which is something that college um, young adults uh, really have to think through like during that time period, cause they're away from their parents for the first time um, or whether it's what am I going to do with life? What really matters? What are the priorities and everything like that? And um, oftentimes they have these distractions they can run to, whether it's um, like, whether it's football games, whether it's the bars, whether it's hanging out with friends, anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's, yeah, like kind of what we were talking about beforehand, and maybe this can lead into um, maybe the next question is like, I, I'm kind of hoping this can be a time for them to where they're really able to kind of maybe not even have to sit, but just have these conversations or have these thoughts uh, on just these deep things in life and figuring out like what, like who am I, um, what really matters in life and things like that. And so, um, yeah, do you kind of want to just speak into that in terms of like what you would want to encourage um, like these young adults, or like our college friends who are um, going through the season that you interact with on a daily basis? Um, just like what you would say um, that um, just to be able to provide encouragement, um, be able to provide wisdom or just like things that kind of can change their perspective on what's going on right now. Mm, yeah yeah definitely um yeah i i think the first thing would be hey uh if i'm talking to a college student face-to-face or a college friend uh, as we like to call them uh because they are they're our friends but uh hey you're you're sitting at a place where uh we can all say it's okay everyone uh lovingly in the world uh whether you look at australia you look at spain you look at you know, we're all going through this and what you're feeling is natural. Um, and I would say, uh, for the Christian or non-Christian, um, you, you're not any less because of the feelings that you're experiencing. Uh, and I think that can be, uh, I think we can struggle too much with, Oh, I'm not supposed to, um, struggle with that. And it's like, no, we're, we're, uh, we're made, uh, to be together and we're not made to stay inside. Um, and so feel, feel freedom. I, I think first of all in that, uh, and the, the other encouragement there would be, uh, don't run from what's going on, um, and invite others into it. Uh, common grace, uh, what, what we get right now is FaceTime, <laughs> uh, zoom calls, media platforms, right? Uh, we can see our friends. We can see those people who, uh, speak into our lives, uh, talk into our lives. Uh, don't, I, I would say, don't let this, let this time be a waste. Those questions that you have matter, um, even on a normal basis. And maybe this is the first time that you're able to even uh, kind of walk into them and really accept them or acknowledge them. Uh, invite people into that, invite the Lord into that. Um, and if you don't have uh, someone, uh, shoot. I would say um, any any Young Life College platform uh, where UNT Young Life uh, hit us up, um, but don't um, don't let this time go to waste um, in in that sense because who you were created to be matters um, whether you are a son or a daughter uh, and also uh, you have been given talents uh, and abilities no one else has and i think even this video is a representation of the different talents and abilities other people have i can't make a video like this uh (laughs) doesn't mean i couldn't i just uh i've never tried um look at the wonderful creation you've been created to be by god uh and you you, whether it's drawing painting whether it's dancing whether it's uh photography hone those skills um we can uh, for the better most part 
Um, a lot of us can still go on walks. We can still go to parks. We can still uh, uh, go outside. And so write a poem, um, pick up something new. Uh, there's a lot of different platforms right now that are offering one to two months of free uh, lessons uh, because of what is going on around the world. And so don't think you're a waste of space either. You uh, were looked on from the beginning of the world and called well uh, and said, I'm well pleased. God said, I'm well pleased when he, when he looked at you. Um, and to go back to Psalms 139, you, you were knitted, knitted. Uh, in your mother's womb by the Lord. Uh, he took time on you. And so um, you are not alone. Uh, and also you are not, um, you are not a mistake. And so don't let this, don't let this time be a thinking of otherwise. Uh, and then what I'd say is uh, for the, the, the Christians in the room, uh, Hey, uh, I, I want to refer you back to John one, or I'm sorry, John 13. Uh, 34 and 35 it says a new command i give to you uh, that you love one another just as i have loved you uh, you also are to love one another by this all people will know that you are my disciples uh, if you have love for one another um, love the lord your god with all your heart mind and soul love your neighbor as yourself uh, and then love one another I, I think one of the cool things right now is we get the opportunity and ability to reach out to people we might not have had the opportunity to reach out to. We, we maybe uh, even kind of left on the wayside and uh, I'm not calling anyone out. What I'm saying is, is uh, the world will know us by how we love, especially in a pandemic like this. Um, and so it's, 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 um, maybe you have to face, maybe you have to text maybe you have to call but shoot them a facetime seeing someone else's face right now is huge uh and then get more people on it and then have a ball do um do funny games uh talk about some serious stuff uh and uh the lord is pretty pretty uh predominant when he says we're two or more there i i am there also uh and he has not forgotten us in this um we are in the growing pains and so um but yeah, I, I, I would say uh, for the college friends, um, we've not seen this, but this is not something outside of the gospel. And so, uh, and it's not something uh, new to the world. And so uh, we're all yeah. waiting patiently with you. Yeah, I mean, even just along that, <clears throat> I guess something that kind of just came to mind, um, because I, the first time I heard about Young Life, I believe it was actually from Chase. So, um I mean, do you have any brief, almost testimonies, a brief story you kind of want to share about the impact that Young Life has had on a student or a group of students or just, you know, it's kind of something that would be encouraging for those of us that might not know what Young Life yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, everyone uh, has got their own flavor, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, Young Life's mission is to reach adolescents for the sake of the gospel and uh, walk with them in their faith. Uh, we are relational ministry, uh, relation on relation, and just modeling uh jesus's model of walking with people uh as they go uh and so uh in college especially uh for the next uh four years as you are in college uh what we all we do is that same model uh walking with people um as we proclaim uh, the name of jesus but then also building a relationship whether you accept christ or not uh we're not going anywhere uh, because christ never went anywhere um, he walked with his disciples. He walked with, uh, the masses. Um, but then also, uh, we are lovingly continually going to talk to you about our Lord and savior, uh, and then live life on life. And what I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about sitting, uh, in a circle and singing Kumbaya, although that's fun. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm talking about going fishing, going hunting, uh, going, uh, climbing, uh, even just going to a good pizza shop and having a slice of pizza. Um, and then, uh, for the ones who do accept Christ, for the ones who are called home by the Lord, um, uh, walking with them in deep discipleship, uh, of what it looks like, uh, to live a day by day, moment by moment, personal, desperate, dependent relationship on God, um, as they move throughout their four years. And then, uh, sorry. Uh, and then, um, with whatever, uh, 
field of study that they're in, whether that's business, whether that's uh, ministry, whether that's uh, art, whether it, whatever it is, whatever the Lord's gifted, gifted them with, uh, that that is where the Lord has called them to. And then not only that, but that is also where the Lord uh, is going to use them in ministry. They don't have to be a pastor. They don't have to be a this or that. Uh, simply follow the Lord's calling on their life by the by the leading of the Spirit, uh, and so that's that's uh, the fun that we get to do at UNT, and that's the fun we get to do across the world through middle school, high school, uh, college, uh, teen moms, uh, and then Capernaum, which is uh, special needs students as well. So, yeah, it's so awesome. good, man. Um, and yeah, dude, like anyone who's listening to this who. Um, anyone who's listening to this who feels like they might be alone or like they don't have anyone to turn to um yeah reach out to like reach out to your young life leader in your area reach out to any of us uh reach out to daniel we'll include his information down in the description as well um and yeah and something just real quick i want to end on is I, I love that you said that like this season and then the, and this time is not a waste. Um, and just like the, like any person is not a waste of a person. Like everyone is valuable just as like this time is valuable. And there's this thought that one of my buddies Montel says who we've had on the podcast previously is um, rest is moving forward when you're resting with God. It's something where any time spent in his mm. presence is not wasted. Um, and as well, I think we can extend that to any time we're loving on people that's not wasted, um, whether kind of what you were speaking to, um, whether they, they come to believe in Jesus or not. Um, it's something that we're commanded to do, um, no matter the result, because um, that's what unconditional mm-hmm. love is at the end of the day. Um, but so just kind of a little thought to leave um, everyone with. So, um, yeah, that'll be a wrap for us today. Um, Daniel. Really appreciate you taking the time, man. Uh, this was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks for inviting me on. Uh, hope one day I can come back, but uh, hit me up when you're in Texas. <laughs> yeah, for, for sure, bro. Um, and then uh, we'll link all his description down or all of his info down in the description below if you want to support him uh, with his ministry in life and everything like that um, as well. Um, If you'd want to support us here at Perspectives to keep us hosting these podcasts, keep us um, being able to run these different activities and programs, um, all of our information will be down below. Um, And as always, if you like today's um, little quarantine session, pandemic party, Corona combo, (laughs) whatever we're going to call this, um, definitely feel free to just like, comment, share, and subscribe. Um, And then Daniel, would you just want to pray us out real quick, man? Yeah, definitely. Thank you, man. Uh, Father, uh, thank you for this day you've given us. Um, Thank you that we can just come uh, and be honest uh, and see what you're doing in the world. Uh, Father, we don't know what that is. Uh, uh, This this pandemic is hitting us um, either uh, distantly or very personally, uh, but we can rest that you are good, uh, that uh, you uh, love us not only individually, but um, you also, uh, Father, are, are, are calling us home as well. Uh, and so whether that's home here, uh, where we get to realize who you've created us to be and how we get to walk in that, or uh, whether that's actually calling us home, uh, we have peace and rest in uh, the one who is the King of Peace and the Lord of Lords. Father, I thank you for uh, the, this ministry that uh, is doing podcasts in these times and that we'll get uh, that uh, it's speaking to 10, 15, uh, 100, 1,000, uh, but whatever that is, Lord, I pray that your spirit will be uh, and wrestle with the spirits of the ones uh, who are listening to this podcast lovingly uh, to remind them that um, you see them individually. Uh, and you love them uh, specifically. And uh, as we go, Lord, um, I pray that we won't waste this time in the quarantine, but Lord, we would see uh, what it is you're doing with that specific time. Uh, And we would maybe come for the first time uh, in a very real way uh, without um, all of the other noises in our lives Uh, and come face to face with you 
um, and even face to face with who you've created us to be. And so, uh, Father, thank you for this day. Uh, it's rainy here in Texas, so thank you for this rainy day. Uh, thank you uh, for some great guys. Uh, thank you for uh, just maybe 30 minutes uh, to an hour of some good conversation. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> much appreciated, man. But yeah. all right, y'all. That'll be a, it for today. So much love. God bless. <laughs>